Hey everyone, it's Joe Waxman, and I'm back again with another video. Uh, today, I want to talk about Neptune in Sagittarius. That's the topic of this video. Um, Neptune was in Sagittarius for 1970 to... Sure, I'm not sure when it ends. Um, Hold on a second. I, uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, nineteen eighty four, November twenty first, nineteen eighty four. Okay. Um. Okay, so this is just for reference. Um, it first moved in January 5th, 1970. So a total of 14 years. Covers mostly, most of the 70s and early 80s. Uh, so what is, what is Neptune? Neptune's one of the outer planets um, along with Uranus and Pluto. Now, Uranus and Pluto are, um, it's important to understand uh, all three of them in context with each other. Uranus is the first planet outside of Saturn, and that, that's very important for the nature of Uranus, which is kind of like, it, it is the, it embodies the, that, the outside the box, that rebellious, uh, beyond the rules kind of um, motif. It is that's what it symbolizes. It symbolizes. Uh, it represents being beyond Saturn, being beyond the limitations of Saturn. Um, Neptune is a little bit different in that it's not so concerned about being beyond the limitations of Saturn because it already is. It's already like been there, done that kind of thing, you know. It's it's kind of floating in space, Neptune. Neptune is um, different in, from Uranus and Pluto in that it's it's less intellectual and more feeling oriented, artistic, creative, imaginative. Um, whereas Uranus, especially Uranus, but also Pluto, is very intellectual. Pluto is a mix of both. Pluto has a lot of feeling, uh, deep feeling, but it's also very intellectual. Uh, Uranus is not intellectual. It aids the intellect and its imagination because it's the ruler of Pisces, the co-ruler of Pisces, but it is just sort of this ephemeral fog, right? And sometimes we say the Neptunian fog in relation to Neptune because it brings about a lot of that, that imagination, the dream world, the 12th house, the subconscious, um, the ocean expanse of Pisces. Um, you know, so things that are associated with Neptune are, are, are t arts and imagination and creativity and storytelling and film and cinema and photography, um, delusion and fantasy, um, complete unreality, right? You know, you want to talk about, you know, uh, Neptune is in Pisces right now and it's just like we're living in La La Land, like just complete fiction, you know. That's very obvious right now. Um, everything that is, you know, just unreliable and um, illusory is, is Neptunian, right? So d d the dissolution of things, the complete surrender and melting into the cosmic ocean. Um, so with that comes a very high level of spirituality as well and sort of divine love, all embracing love. That's why Venus is exalted in the sign that Neptune rules, which is Pisces, because that's like the Venus's highest expression of, of unconditional love, like, right? So like Neptune uh, represents that um, uh, the unconditionality, the complete surrender, right? So it's just this very, very big, expansive energy. 
and um, you know there's a correlation to Jupiter because it co-rules Pisces with along with Jupiter, right? So some would say it's like the higher octave of Jupiter or maybe the higher octave of Venus, which you know again like I can understand that, but uh, it's its own planet, so it's definitely its own energy, non-derivative of Jupiter or Venus. But there's some similarities. It's like more feminine, even though Neptune, the god, is played by a man, you know, like the, you know, like, I guess, you know, the, the, you know, the sea god with the pitchfork, or like Aquaman in the, you know, Marvel Universe. Um, but, uh, yeah, it does have very feminine energy, in my opinion, um, along with Venus, not necessarily Jupiter. Jupiter is more masculine, but um, it has a very a, a very big expansion to it as well. Um, so that's Neptune, right? And, and it's just sort of the, this this giant foggy ocean of of energy, and it and embodies like very high level spirituality, but also uh, complete confusion. So like one of the polarities you could see in Neptune or in Pisces is this kind of um, asleep or or very awake, right? This deep asleepness or very sublime awareness of, of very high truth, right? So that's the spiritual element. So it's so like spirituality and delusion and a lot of mixing between those two, you know, like a Neptunian Piscean person won't really know uh, whether they're being delusional or pulling on, you know, down some very, you know, refined, sublime spiritual truths. It could, it could be one or the other, sometimes both, you know, one sometimes more one than the other, right? And so what is, what is Sagittarius? Well, Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, the great expansive gas giant planet. Uh, Sagittarius is very... Uh, adventurous and philosophical and religious and high-minded, uh, very aware. Um, it's a fire planet or uh, sign. It's a mutable fire. And, uh, you know, Sagittarius represents just this very high level of thinking, right? Like Leo is more like mundane, you know, education, regular education. Where, and then Sagittarius is the the master's degree and the PhDs, right? And the the religion and the philosophy and the God, you know, Sagittarius brings to mind God, the idea of God, the realization of God, the connection to God. It's very God oriented, right? Um, and religion, like I said, religion and adventure, like travel, long distance travel, right? And so, there's a there's a real harmony and, and synergy between Neptune and, and Sagittarius because it's it's bringing together Jupiter and Neptune, which are already together in Pisces. So it's almost like a Piscean. There's a Piscean flavor with Neptune and Sagittarius, and um, some will say that Neptune is exalted, or have said that Neptune is exalted in Sagittarius. Um, I don't know for sure that it is, but I do know that it's not. That, that it is in good dignity, I would say. It's in good dignity, uh, Neptune and Sagittarius. Um, it's very, it's very uh, free and wild and spiritual and evolved and like high-minded. You know, the two things, they, 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 they go together very well. They're not very conflictual, right? But they're, well, what they're not is um, very grounded. They're not very grounded. Uh, they're not very um, focused or critical or intellectual. Well, intellectual in a very big, expansive way. You know, I, I kind of think of Ram Das when I think of uh, Neptune and Sagittarius. You know, that that um, the college professor who becomes returns to uh, Eastern Hindu spirituality. Right? He started he started in the '60s, but um, he became really popular in the '70s. I think Be Here Now, his, his breakthrough book came out in 1971. So that's after this. That's, um, you know, Neptune. That's already Neptune and Sag. Um, so the 70s are full of Neptune and Sagittarius uh, flavor, right? With the, the big rock and roll. You can, there's a very expansive feeling to this. And like, you know, you'll see it in culture, reflected in culture. 
and the 70s, you know, obviously have different things going on, different themes. But one of it is like the really big rock band, right? Arena rock and just like, you know, very big sound with the big hair, the long hair and uh, just huge rock and roll kind of expansive party. Another association with Sagittarius is like this partying kind of flavor. They, they Sagittarius love to celebrate and love to party. So it's like an endless party, an endless expansive party. And uh, both Neptune and Sagittarius are very um, sort of lean towards the drinking and the drugs and the excess, you know, the expansive, let it all loose, let it all hang out kind of flavor of just this, this partying and expansion and just wildness. Sagittarius is very wild, right? wild and free, right? As opposed to, you know, the 60s. Well, the 60s had did have a very Piscean flavor, actually, because they were pulling from, you know, the the, the uh, Pluto and Uranus and Virgo conjunct. They were pulling a lot of Piscean energy. So the, it started in the 60s, but um, it went even bigger in the 70s. It really expanded in the 70s. There was a sort of contraction in the 60s. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Just an energetic, it was energetically more contracted. And in the 70s, it just kind of blew up, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's the flavor of Neptune and Sagittarius. It's just th this very big, big spirituality, or, or um, you know, the expansion of and dilu dilution of, you know, very high level thinking, um, drugs and alcohol and partying, big rock and roll, big, big everything. Everything was bigger with Neptune and Sagittarius. It just really expanded the, the energies. Um, so now you pro wherever you have this in your chart, it, it will play either a, a major or minor role depending on what it aspects, right? If it's aspecting a personal point or planet um, heavily, then you'll you'll notice it more. But if it's not, you probably won't even notice it that much, right? I mean, I have it opposite my sun and Venus, trying my ascendant Lord Mars. So for me, actually, it, it does play a pretty big role. And I would say that people with Neptune and Sagittarius in the chart, no matter where it's in the chart, are probably going to have a lot of that big expansion, expansive quality. They're going to have a, you know, a uh, real sort of love of partying, partying in a big way, you know, loud rock and roll. And, and um, you know, I think uh, you get together a group of uh, Neptune and Sagittarian natives and they're going to throw a party unlike too many other people. You know, really big partiers, right? And really big thinking as well, you know, like very expansive philosophy, very spiritual, really loving to deep dive deep into like very big uh themes of spirituality and philosophy and God and religion, right? Because it's bringing two those two things together, like ninth house and twelfth house. You know, you go travel into a foreign land and then you move there, you settle there. That's the sort of Neptune and Sagittarian flavor. Like, I'm going to go to travel to India. Oh my God, I love it so much. I just stayed here, right? Something like that. Or Morocco or like um, Argentina, who knows, whatever, right? Um, yeah. Um, so what else? I mean, yeah. So like, you know, if it's expand, if it's hitting like any part of your, your chart, um in a particular way especially like personal points ascendant sun moon venus mercury mars i mean less so like with you know jupiter and saturn and probably if it's if it's aspecting like pluto or uranus um that's just a generational thing that's not really going to play much have much to do with you um but yeah if it's angular as well then that's an aspect to the ascendant or in you know, first, fifth, or ninth, trying to the ascendant, you know, that sort of thing. Then it's going to have, or conjunct the ascendant, that's going to have a strong um, influence on your chart. You know, if it's conjunct the moon, that's going to have a really big influence on your chart, but not always in a good way, because conjunct the moon, 
could mean tendency towards too much partying, right? Um, and that can really, uh, you know, bring people down. But if, if you have like a strong Saturn or, um, you know, you just have other good things that make you more disciplined, um, then it can make you very uh, intuitive. Uh, the other thing about Neptune and all the other planets is that they're, they're spiritually oriented. They can bring really great intuition, psychic ability. Um, you know, if it's like trying to your moon, which is in the eighth house in cancer, you know, that would be like, you know, strong indicator of, of something psychic or if it's conjunct in a water house, water sign, um, things like that. Um, you know, very strong psychic ability. But if it's badly aspecting it, squares, um, conjunct in a difficult sign like Scorpio, I mean, that's very unstable, uh, could indicate mental illness, uh, especially if a person doesn't have good discipline and goes towards the drugs and alcohol side of things. So, yeah, um, you know, that's that's Neptune and Sag. What else? Oh, like, well, Star Wars, what well, came out in... Well, 75 or 76, right? Neptune and Sag. So this is very Neptune and Sagittarian. Uh, because Neptune does have to do with film, right? And all the arts in general, music, creativity. And then Sagittarius is the, the great adventure, right? So that's like this huge adventure. And Star Wars is probably one of, one of if not the greatest movie, you know, series. Originally, it was a trilogy. Now there are a whole, whole bunch of them. Of all time, right? So it's a very big expand. It's you know, it's a great combination. It's really nice to have Neptune and Sagittarius somewhere in your chart. Um, you know, I have it in my second house, which is not so great for assets. I, I just can't seem to hold on to anything. Neptune will dissolve whatever it touches, right? So if it's in your second house, you're gonna probably lose all your assets, like I do all the time. Uh, but there's it's kind of there's a magical quality to Neptune, so things come to me magically as well, right? Like I, money just comes and goes. Like I just have no control over it, right? Um, yeah. If it's in your seventh house, for example, like you'll probably marry an artist or a spiritual type or a hippie, things like that, right? Um, if it's in your 10th house, you could have an artistic career, uh, an actor, dancer. You know, Neptune uh, ruling Pisces has to do with the feet. Um, you know, not great for a politician. If, if, if there's a politician with Neptune in the 10th house, it means they're a liar. Yeah, they're going to fool a lot of people, but they're they are definitely an actor. They're definitely lying to you. You don't want an actor or politician like, like uh, Joe Biden has Neptune in the 10th house. Um, and he's just basically acting and lying the whole time. But um, yeah, if it's in the 12th house, it's very spiritual. If it's in the first house, it's also very spiritual. Um, it might make you overly dreamy it's in the first house if it's opposite the sun or conjunct the sun can create some psychic ability but also like delusion fantasy and that's again the potential for where any personal point that is touching you know conjunct mercury um, if it's square to mercury then that's not so great for the thinking mind for you know honesty things like that um yeah if it's in good aspect to mars create a lot of idealism right uh religious fervor you could say um uh, with saturn it can be very idealistic as well and very um so with saturn it can create actually if it's good if it's a good sign it can it can be quite spiritual Saturn will crystallize the, the Neptunian energy. Um, yeah, depending on what kind of aspect you have. All right, so these are just some examples and just you know overall general flavor of the um, Neptune in Sagittarius. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this. And like to book a reading on my website macroastrology.com or you can just email me at macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com and 
Don't forget to put like, subscribe, and you know the thing. All right. That's it, guys. Take care. Bye.